Hello everybody, Anatoly here, and uh, today I'm going to play through this uh, Russian edutainment title, Happy Birthday, uh, by Nikita. Uh, this game came out in uh, 1995. Oh, there was actually um, an intro before this, um, but I decided not to include it. It's nothing interesting, it's literally just a bunch of still pictures with the uh, narration over it. Also, this game is really weird, because right now, if if you previously haven't finished the game, uh, right now on this logo screen, this title sequence, you're supposed to press Control r to uh, restore um, your game. There's otherwise no saving, loading, or um, really a real menu uh, in the game. There is like a, a sound... Uh, the, uh, there's like a sound... Um, you can adjust the sound settings, but... Uh, or quit, that's like the menu in the game. And I don't think I actually show it. Okay, so this being obviously a, a children's game, it's rather easy, you just point and click. And the whole edutainment aspect of it is uh, is kind of weird. Uh, this is supposed to teach you English, so uh, when you right click on something, you just get the, the word. And that's all, that's really it. It really doesn't teach you anything, and most of the um, tasks in the game are just the actual tests, and in fact it just tests your knowledge of English vocabulary rather than anything else. Uh, this is actually a clue to the first puzzle. Uh, all those, all this fruit you will have to get later on in a mini game of sorts. And that's that. Um, that's literally just uh, all of your game mechanics. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep clicking on uh, random things cause to get things going, because the bear walks uh, rather slowly. And uh, right off the bat, uh, here's your first mini game. You know, you just get the balloons. Uh, and that's what uh, I mean by this game really not teaching you anything. It's, um, you know, it expects you to know what those colors are. Um, Like, it really doesn't, uh, you know, there is no screen before it that sh sort of shows you what are all these colors. Uh, no, it just basically jumps straight to the, uh, you know, straight to testing you, uh, to, to testing your knowledge uh, of vocabulary, which is somewhat weird to me. You'd think uh, uh, that kind of game would actually uh, include... Oh, it didn't say balloon? Huh, that's, that's weird. And yeah, once you uh, encounter those uh, mailboxes, this is one of your tasks, is to uh, put the invitations on your birthday, you put invitations in all of your friends' mailboxes. Uh, sort of weird, but okay. And you might also notice that, you know, uh, this is, this is, uh, the bear is called Finny. Um, and he kind of looks like Russian, the Russian version of uh, Winnie the Pooh, but he isn't. Uh, the, the manual specifically describes him as not being Winnie the Pooh. Uh, he's just, um, you know, Winnie's neighbor. But um, somehow his friends are still, you know, Piglet, or Rabbit, uh, you know, uh, the, the Eeyore, and, and the Owl. That's where. Yeah, this is uh, periodically you run into those sort of weird mini games. They're randomized uh, each time, uh, and yeah, this is <laughs> this is actually uh, a, a weird randomization here. Like this one, this one is tough. You have to go through most of them. Usually, you can just cut like in a semi-straight line. Uh, this game, uh, you know, could be obviously inspired by the humongous uh, games, maybe even. Fatty Bear and the whole birthday theme. I mean, the connections are minimal. There's the I think the most that they took is like you click on random objects uh, of the scenery and they make you know some sort of weird animations. But you know they didn't really deliver on this aspect of it. But it was I've I've seen kids play this and they seem to have fun. And yeah, this is uh, the first mini game. I mean, again, you're really not told what to do here. This is basically where you collect all the fruit that you've seen on the plates uh, before. I, and you only have seen it if you clicked on the, on the plates and hands before. Uh, 
cherry. I think I'm running out of things to say here, but uh, yeah. So you just pick up the fruit, and if you um, if you uh, pick the wrong one, you just have to climb the rope again. And you just keep climbing the rope until you get all the stuff, and you never get any kind of um, notification that you're actually done or anything. Like eventually, when, when you climb the rope, it just uh, stops asking you for fruit, and that's that. No, like a music jungle or anything. The game is also very short. Well, you know that because you've seen the length of the video, but yeah. It's probably meant, uh, it probably was meant to play in a, like a, a, a class, a school class, rather than anything else. I don't really know. Maybe it was meant to be like a teacher's tool or something that would explain the 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 non-teaching aspect of it. But honestly, I don't know. Okay, yeah. This this actually only happens once when uh, when you have to use uh, an object or another object. I actually quite like the music. And it's also weird the selection of the objects, like, uh, yeah, you know, like you click, you'd, you'd think there'd be more words, like you click on the door, anywhere in the house you click, it's like in the house, or maybe a window, you know, they were used like window, chimney, but it's never anything else. And we are coming on to the, yeah, we're gonna walk the plank. Yeah, this is another arcade sequence, and you know, you just uh, shoot the pine cones that are falling on you. Uh, it's actually it's actually really tough. Uh, I'm surprised I, I I beat it that quickly uh, because when you get hit, like he sits down, and uh, you know that opens you up for other pine cones to fall on you, and you just never get up. Right? It's quite ridiculous. Oh yeah, I'm I'm here too early. This is uh, also a, a weird thing because they allow you to visit the store before you can do anything in it. So yeah, uh, we'll be back to this later. And pathfinding is also really weird. He never really walks to the spot. Uh, oh, the frog teleported. Uh, you never really walk to the spot there. Or... Okay, yeah. Here's another arcade sequence. Oh well, it was kind of quick, right? Uh, this is a remake of uh, uh, Nikita's original game, uh, Perestroika or Toppler, and I lost because for some reason it wouldn't. Uh, that never happened to me before here. I probably was just wasn't clicking enough, but um, <laughs> I'm really trying. Uh, it wouldn't let me get off on the other shore. Just walk around there. Ugh. Silly. But yeah, this was, look it up, Perestroika or Toppler, it had a foreign release, was the game that started um, the uh, Nikita company. I've mentioned it in, a, in my first podcast. Yeah, so basically the store that we visited previously only uh, only becomes active when you uh, when you um, when you delivered all the invitations. Here's a slightly more interesting uh, puzzle coming up, in my opinion, at least. You just keep walking, and those mushrooms appear, and you have the random numbers on top, and then you uh, you literally drag and drop. Uh, those, uh, you know, uh, the numbers into the thing. I, again, it's kind of weird. I mean, 
everything not is not very intuitive now that I think about it. I mean, I guess it. I never really had a problem guessing it, but my question would be, would a child just guess that you actually have to drag the numbers uh, into that display? I don't know. I really don't know. Music is really nice. It has really nice ad-lib music. And a few tunes. I guess he had to walk this slow because there's really uh, um, there's really not that many screens in that game. Um, we oh yeah, we came all the way around. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go back. Uh, I should have started with the owl's house, but oh well. I forgot. It's been quite a long time since I played this last. So I will have to go through the to the couple mini games again. But yeah, now I have to go back to the store. And again, there is no indication uh, that you should be doing that. Uh, just nothing happens if you don't do the right thing. Oh, now they're going out of sequence. That was weird. I don't think I've ever seen then the numbers go out of sequence. That's strange. Six. Uh -huh. Eight. Eight. Uh -huh. All right. Well, so much for those uh, evil counted mushrooms. It's kind of surreal, isn't it? If you ever wondered, you can look up Russian Winnie the Pooh. Russian Winnie the Pooh, um, thanks to the famous cartoon series, uh, looks like this. He looks like a like a brown bear, not the toy toy plush bear. Oh, now my screen is not scrolling properly. And of course, he lives in Russian woods with you know uh, with mushrooms, fir trees, and uh, oh, I really suck at this. And, you know, birch trees. Something that, you know, English woods probably not big on. So, yeah, another very strange design decision here is when you get to the store and you deliver all of your invitations, and there's actually uh, there, the clue uh, the clue is on the bottom because you, you get check marks for all your friends on the bottom when you deliver all the invitations. You pick one of the um, wrapped presents. Each one of them represents the theme of the test that you'll see um, that you'll get to do in the end in order to win the game. But when you pick the present, you're actually supposed to pick it and leave. But it's kind of blocking the door, so it's not very intuitive. And if you click on the present again, it just puts it back so you can select a different one. Really weird. Just the, the, the placement. Um, uh, once again, I don't understand. Well, actually, now I've done everything. Uh, and uh, just have to get back to uh, Finney's house. And, uh, and uh, get to the... Uh, the final task, and then uh, then we're done. This is really short, but then uh, then again, this is you know for children. And now, the more I think about it, maybe it was meant to be played at school more than anything else, because Nikita made quite a few of those educational games in the early '90s um, on floppies. This is a floppy release, although it's actually rather large, I guess, with all the speech and everything. See if it goes out of order now. No, it's back to going in order. That was just, I don't know, a weird bug. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so Nikita made quite a few educational games. Actually, a lot of companies made educational games in the early 90s. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess some of them were clearly meant to be played in school. Like, I've seen some Nikita packages, and they were more like, you know, stuff you'd play at school. Ah, uh, the sunflowers. Uh, 
I mean, uh, yeah, this doesn't really uh, stack up against the Himangus titles in any way. But for Russian, like, small educational title, this is actually something. Usually they're kind of just one thing over and over, but this has a variety of mini games and all that stuff. Oh yeah, so once you pick the present, it uh, transforms into this chest and you open it up and you get a bunch of items that are all, you know, announced. And um, the test is uh, the next time when, when all the items are out and you click um, on the chest it will uh, show you the question mark, you click on that, also kind of the redundant thing, um, and it will uh, ask you to identify an item. Let's see. And you get this butterfly if you get it correctly, and... Uh, let's see if I can identify them correctly here. Yeah, you get this little uh, caterpillar that crawls away. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, but the thing is, it always asks you for the items in exactly the same order that it presented them. Uh, I find kind of weird. Um, I mean, makes things a little easier, but maybe again. Maybe it's because it's for children. And that's that. I mean, that's l that was a lot of stuff to fit in the present, and that caterpillar glitched out for some reason. And that was it. I mean, uh, Finny worked really hard to get all his friends to show up, who none of them were at home. And now, all of a sudden, there they are. Now the question is, did you buy your own present? Did he just buy all that stuff and use sofa and the camera for himself and his friends just showed up to eat? Hey, it's Happy Birthday playing. A song that we was thought to be copyrighted until recently. And, uh, so it was found out that it's actually not. Look it up. It's a very interesting case. And now you get a oh, separate, different executable, which actually uh, works a different resolution. Oh, the rabbit doesn't like flying. Oh no. Yeah, the game works at uh, 320 by 240, and this is obviously 320 by 200. And that's it. I just uh, fly off into what looks like a sunset. Goodbye, him and all his friends. None of them really look, except for Piglet. Nobody looks particularly happy about this. Oh, what a douche. Well, they fly off. And uh, to never be seen again.